project cash flow example problems. Let's consider the following project. It has a six-year economic life and requires the following capital expenditures. We're going to acquire land for one million dollars, a building for three million dollars, and we're going to fill it with equipment costing six million dollars. At the end of the project, we're going to sell off these assets and we expect to sell them for the following salvage. The land, 1.5 million, the building, 1.2 million, and the equipment will sell for 2.4 million. Building and equipment are depreciated in a seven-year property class and we'll assume that land doesn't depreciate. Marketing projects first-year sales of 18 million with a 6% increase each year. Variable costs be estimated as 60% of sales. Fixed costs in the first year are $3.6 million and will increase at the rate of inflation. And our expected inflation rate is 6%. The corporate tax rate is 34% and we'll apply that to operating income and also the salvage value. And given the risk of the project, the appropriate opportunity cost of capital is 12%. We have our estimates for our networking capital requirements in each year. Our initial investment in networking capital in year zero is $2.16 million. Cash flow from capital requirements. We'll start with our initial investment. We purchase land for a million dollars, a building for $3 million, and purchase equipment for $6 million. We make an initial investment in networking capital of $2.16 million. Our total initial investment in year zero is $12.16 million. Next we go to our depreciation schedule. And we'll determine the yearly depreciation expense for the building. And we also want to determine its book value at the end of year six. We'll need that to calculate the capital gain on the salvage of the building. Let's start with year one. From the depreciation schedule, we get our depreciation percentage for the year, 14.29%. To get the depreciation expense for year one, we multiply the 14.29% by the initial cost of building, $3 million. To get our depreciation expense in year one of $429,000. Our ending book value at the end of year one is our initial three million minus 429,000 or 2.571 million dollars. For year two, we get our depreciation percentage from the depreciation schedule, 24.49%. Our depreciation expense for year two is the depreciation percentage, 0.2449 multiplied by the initial cost of building, $3 million. So our depreciation expense for year two is 735000 Our book value at the end of year two is our $2.571 million minus 735000 or $1.836 million. We work down to year six. We get a schedule of our depreciation expense for each year from year one through year six. And we also get the ending book value at the end of year six. We do the same thing for the equipment. So we got our depreciation expense schedule for the equipment and also the book value of the equipment at the end of year six. Cash flow from capital requirements. Let's calculate our net salvage. For the building, we expect to sell the building for $1.2 million. It has a book value at the end of year six of $400,000. And so for tax purposes, we have an $800,000 capital gain. Our salvage, $1.2 million. The book value of the asset, $400,000. And so we have a capital gain of $800,000. We apply our 34% tax rate to the $800,000 capital gain, and we get a capital gains tax of 270000 
our net salvage. So salvage value of the building, 1.2 million, minus the capital gains tax, 270,000. So we have a net salvage for the building of 530,000. And we do that for the equipment and for the land. And we've got a total net salvage at the end of year six of $3.72 million. Cash flow from capital requirements are change in net working capital. From a net working capital schedule, we calculate the change in net working capital for each year. And let's note in year six, we assume we recover our investment in net working capital. Our investment in net working capital at the beginning of year six is $2.81 million. And so we assume that that is recovered at the end of year six. Our operating cash flows. Our first year revenue is $18 million. And it increases each year at 6%, the rate of inflation. Variable costs in each year are 60% of that year's sales. Fixed costs are initially $3.6 million in year one, an increase at the rate of inflation, 6% in the subsequent years. We get our depreciation expense for the building and the equipment. Revenues minus costs minus depreciation is earnings before interest and taxes. We calculate our tax, which is 34% of earnings before interest and taxes. And we get our after tax, earnings before interest and taxes. We add back depreciation to get operating cash flow. So our initial investment in year zero, $12.16 million. Our net salvage at the end of year six, $3.72 million. Our change in net working capital, our operating cash flows, and we put it all together to get our estimate of the project's cash flow stream. We discount those cash flows by a 12% opportunity cost of capital. The present value of the cash flow stream is $15.91 million. The project is worth $15.91 million. From that, we subtract out the initial investment, $12.16 million, and we get a net present value of $3.75 million. The net present value is positive it will increase shareholders' wealth. The project should be accepted. The project will increase shareholders' wealth by $3.75 million. It will increase shareholders' equity by $3.75 million. On a per share basis, we would divide the net present value by the number of shares outstanding to get its impact per share. The project will also increase total firm value by $3.75 million. Now we'll consider a special case project cash flow problem that uses a technique called equivalent annual cost. Equivalent annual cost is a technique used to evaluate mutually exclusive alternatives in which the assets are used in a continuous process and replacement of the asset is expected at the end of its economic life the mutually exclusive alternatives have unequal lives. Let's look at a problem. Suppose you had a choice between two machines, A and B. A costs $15,000 and will last six years. B performs the same function as A, but it's an economy model. B costs $10,000 and will last three years. The appropriate real cost of capital is 6%, and the machines have the following real operating costs, and we're assuming a continuous operation. Because this is a continuous process, it's assumed that the machines will be replaced with the same model at the end of its economic life. Given future replacements, it's best to work with real cash flows and a real cost of capital. The two machines are designed differently, 
but have identical capacity and do exactly the same job. Because the two machines are part of the same process that produces exactly the same product, the only way to differentiate between them is on the basis of cost. So the focus is on their initial cost and their operating costs. The better alternative has the lowest total cost. So let's calculate the total present value of the cost for each machine. The cash flows are real cash flows and so are discounted by our real cost of capital. Present value of A is $39,587. The present value of B is $26,038. Should we choose B because it has the lowest total present value of its costs? Not necessarily. Note that B will be replaced at the end of year 3, three years earlier than A, which is replaced at the end of year 6. Given replacement, the analysis must consider the effect of the present investment decision on future investment decisions. Also note that the present value of A's costs is spread out over more years than the present value of B's costs. To make a comparative evaluation, somehow we have to convert the total present value of costs to a cost per year, and that's the equivalent annual cost. The equivalent annual cost is the annual cash flow that if paid out equally each year over the project's life will result in the same present value as the actual cash outflows, including the initial investment. Consider the following present value formula. The present value is equal to the equivalent annual cost times an annuity factor. So the equivalent annual cost converts the total present value of the cost to an annual annuity payment. So the problem is a solution to an annuity payment problem. Algebraically, to get the equivalent annual cost, we would take the present value of the total cost and divide it by a present value annuity factor. So for our two machines, given their present values, we calculate the present value annuity factor using the present value equation and we calculate the annuity factor for A and for B. We calculate the equivalent annual cost for each alternative by taking the present value of its total cost and dividing it by the annuity factor. The equivalent annual cost for A is $8,050. The equivalent annual cost for B is $9,741. A has the lowest equivalent annual cost and so A is chosen. Now let's solve this in a spreadsheet. Equivalent annual cost, projects with unequal lives. Suppose you had a choice between two machines, A and B. A costs $15,000 and will last six years. B performs the same function as A, but it's an economy model. B costs $10,000 and will last three years. The appropriate real cost of capital is 6%. The costs are real operating costs. Assume continuous operation. We have the costs for A and B, and we'll solve this in two parts. First, we'll find the present value of the total costs, the real operating costs, and the initial investment. And then we'll solve for the annuity payment, which is the equivalent annual cost. First, let's find the present value of the real operating costs. So go to Formulas, Financial Formulas, scroll down, and select NPV. The NPV formula in Excel is not net present value, but it will calculate the present value of a cash flow stream. Into rate, we input our 6% real opportunity cost capital. Into value 1, we input our real operating costs. I put my cursor 
on the cash flow in year one and shift click on the final cash flow in year six. The entire cash flow stream is inputted into the formula. All right, so I have the present value, the real operating costs, and to those I must add the initial cost in year zero. So I go to the math trick functions, scroll down, and find sum. In number one, I put my year one cost. In number two, I put the present value of the real operating costs. And I get the total present value of machines A's costs. Now I'll calculate the present value of machine B's real operating costs. So I go to the financial functions, scroll down, select NPV, I put in my 6% rate, and put in my three real operating costs. And I get the present value of B's real operating costs. To that, I add the year zero initial cost. So I go to my math trick functions, scroll down, select sum. In the number one, I put my initial year zero cost. In number two, I put the present value of machine B's real operating costs. And I have my total present value of machine B's costs. Now I'll solve for the annuity payments which are the equivalent annual costs. So I go to my finance functions, scroll down, and pick PMT. In the rate, I put my 6%. Number of periods, machine A has a six year economic life. My present value is the total present value of the costs. and I get an equivalent annual cost of $8,050.44. I'll now solve for the annuity payment for machine B. Go to the finance functions. Select PMT payment. My rate 6%. Number of periods. Machine B has a three-year economic life. For present value, the total present value of B's costs. And I get an equivalent annual cost of $9,741.10. Machine A is selected because it has the lowest equivalent annual cost.